Hello, uh, it's June 4th, 2020, and I'm Jonathan, the Assistant Law Librarian here at the Fort Bend County Law Library, and we are continuing our series of videos that we've been making during the coronavirus. Uh, we have been somewhat shut down. Uh, we have partially reopened. Uh, we're open to attorneys and county staff, and the Justice Center is kind of slowly coming back to life. Uh, I know the district clerk's offices are open and the county clerk and the courts seemingly are having more uh, in-person hearings, though they're still continuing with things like Zoom hearings and so forth. So we want to continue to provide information to y'all to assist you while you're working at home, uh, working from your office, and maybe not getting up here to the Justice Center and to the law library to access our computer databases and so forth. So what I'm going to focus on today is a part of Westlaw, the O'Connor's series, and a couple of particular areas of O'Connor's, the family law materials, particularly the family law handbook and the family law forms stuff. Uh, Westlaw and Lexus as well are temporarily offering some free trials of their products uh, so that you can also use these from home uh, from some, in some way. And let me show you now uh, the screen that'll allow you to access or start to set up your account for the Westlaw thing. And then I'm going to switch to the uh, general Westlaw screen. Uh, before I do that, uh, of course, we are available to you as we always are via phone and via uh, email. Our phone number is 281-341-3718. It is llpublic at fortbend.lib.tx. Dot us. Sorry about that. So let me share the screen now and go to the page that will show you how to access Westlaw. So if you'll see this page, if you go up here uh, and go to that screen, uh, type that into your browser or cut and paste it into your browser, uh, that HTTPS, the legal.thompson Reuters, and uh, try Westlaw. So uh, if you want to take a minute and write that down, and that is a way you can access that information. Of course, you can email us, and we can send you the uh, access links to both the uh, Westlaw and Lexus free trial as well. So let me now switch over to the uh, Westlaw page. Let me go back to the beginning to show you how to access it. So here's the main Westlaw page, and of course, it has a general search bar uh, where you can type in terms and so forth to help you do a search, and you can narrow it down by a particular jurisdiction. You know, most people here in Texas, obviously, are gonna choose Texas. Uh, you know, you can do that, and then you can type in your search here, and then it'll bring up responsive materials. It'll bring up cases and forms and statutes and secondary materials that you can then choose from. Uh, but let's look at, in particular, the O'Connor's stuff. And so where you're going to find that is the secondary sources tab here. So if you want to click on that, it's right here. Click on secondary sources. And then you're going to have to scroll down a bit because the secondary sources are divided out by categories and so forth. So if you scroll all the way down pretty much to the publication series and you find O'Connor's here, and it's kind of buried a little bit. Uh, if I at O'Connor's, uh, I would make it a little more prominent on there, but there it is. And just while I'm accessing that, for those of y'all that don't maybe remember, Thomson Reuters, which is the company that owns Westlaw, which is one of our two primary online legal databases, they bought the O'Connor series of books uh, a couple of years ago, and they have now incorporated all that material onto their website. And, and most attorneys in Texas are very familiar with the O'Connor series of books. Um, they cover a uh, whole lot of topics. Uh, first one was probably Texas rules civil trials here, uh, but almost any lawyer practicing in Texas probably has a couple of these books on their desk, depending on the nature of their practice. And what O'Connor's has done and what happens now in this age with a lot of legal publications is the publication is available equally in book form as it traditionally was and now online. And really everything's here that is found in the books. Uh, we also maintain a complete collection of O'Connor's Texas uh, focus books and O'Connor's federal books. So we have 25 or 30 of those uh, here as well. But they're all on here too. 
So let's take a look at a couple of them and I'll kind of be telling you how to access particular materials and then how to send them to yourself and how to utilize them. So let's go to the family law handbook first. You know, family law, and why I'm focusing on family law, it's a big focus of what goes on here at the courthouse. You know, there's three courts and six judges that only handle family law cases. A lot of the attorneys who utilize the law library uh, practice in the family law area. And as far as pro se or self-represented uh, litigants, a lot of what they're involved in here is family law cases. You know, they're often ongoing cases. It might not end with just the divorce being granted there while the children are minors. If there were children of the marriage, uh, the court involvement can last for until they become, those children become adults. And so unfortunately, uh, oftentimes people are brought back into the courthouse, have to come here, you know, seeking enforcement or seeking modification uh, of the, say, the divorce decree or circumstance, you know, uh, things that govern the uh, things such as child support or visitation issues, something like that. So let's look at just a, we'll kind of focus on a particular area to sort of be instructive on this. So a divorce was granted and uh, a divorce decree was entered by the court that granted the divorce and then also laid out the child support, uh, child conservatorship or child custody issues, uh, other things, and let's say a need comes about for it to be modified for some reason. One of the parties or the parties by agreement are gonna seek to modify uh, the uh, decree to uh, take on the new circumstance. And of course there's rules for that under the uh, statutes, the family code, uh, and so O'Connor's, the family law handbook, which would be described as one of the O'Connor's commentaries uh, is uh, talks about the nuts and bolts of this area uh, of family law and all these areas of family law as you're seeing here. So it kind of talks about putting things into practice. Uh, how do you go about doing things? What are the requirements? What are the things you have to do to uh, have a successful modification? So let's say uh, the issue is related to so you'll see here, we, we looked at the various chapters. There's uh, you know, about 11 chapters in this book covering various topics in family law. And then you expand the menu. So I hit this plus side here. So I hit the plus there on modification and it sort of opens, expands the menu into sub chapters. And then you can use that to expand the menu even further into particular issues in the suit to modify. So we're looking here uh, here is the subsection, uh, some general information about modification suits in relationship to conservatorship. So you can click on that and it brings up, just really as it would appear in the printed book, it brings up some information. And then we go to jurisdiction. You know, what jurisdiction do the courts have to uh, modify? Then you go to grounds. What are the grounds that could serve as a basis for modification? Because the courts aren't going to, don't just change things willy nilly. They, you know, have to have solid grounds on which to do so. And so it talks about the information here. If it's by agreement, uh, obviously the overriding factor in family law cases, the best interest of the child, uh, the Holly case uh, is uh, very instructive on that. They call them the Holly factors. So you have this information here. So say, okay, I'm interested in this section in particular in relationship to modification. So I wanna, how do I access that? How do I, I'm here at the law library, or I'm looking at it online, I wanna print that out or I wanna send it to myself for review later. Uh, so you go over here in the upper right to the uh, delivery menu and you hit that arrow there. Let's say you wanna email it to yourself. So you go to the format Let's say I usually send stuff to myself in Word, and then you type in your email address, and then you're and then you hit you're good to go. So So you type in your email address there, 
and you can type in a little note if you want to make a note for yourself and then you just hit email and it sends the item to you in that format say if you're here at the law library and you just want to print it out you can choose the print deal or you can download it so you can save it to a thumb drive it'll open it up in whatever uh, program you need and then you can just uh, download it into a file uh, on your thumb drive So these, like I said, these are the commentaries. These provide uh, information uh, about these particular areas of family law. So let's go back to the main menu for O'Connor's and let's choose a, another publication uh, related to family law. So let's go down to the forum. Let's say you've read up about uh, modification uh, in the family law handbook and now you're ready to uh, utilize some forms to get your modification suit going. So then once again, you're presented with kind of a table of contents, various chapters, and then we go down to uh, suit to modify SAPSER. SAPSER is a kind of a, a little acronym for suit affecting parent-child relationship. Uh, that's a suit affecting parent-child relationship is any kind of suit where children are involved. It can be a divorce or modification or some kind of original uh, suit, a paternity suit things of that nature. So you expand the menu again, let's say, and then it gives various subcategories of, uh, of forms under this uh, topic. Then you say, oh, let's look at the petitions. A petition is what you file with the court to get something going. You're making a petition to ask uh, the court to do something. Uh, and then you have, say, this is the, the form. Uh, there's a couple of different versions, modification of conservatorship. So let's uh, take a look at that form. So this is how it's presented uh, online. We can also, and I want to show you a couple of different things. We can, this is the form. And it's going to have various categories of uh, paragraphs. So you're going to have to kind of go through and review it carefully. And some may or may not be applicable. It's just a case of going through and editing it as needed. So let's, uh, let's once again, we can do the same thing. We can email that form to ourselves and we can choose, you know, Word. So we can then edit it or word perfect if that's the program you use. But there's another feature here. Uh, if you're on the screen, you can say if you're at home and you're utilizing Westlaw from home or you're here at the law library, you can use the easy edit uh, function and you can, and then it says it downloads the document right here and now so you can start working on it. So it opens it up in Word. We'll hit enable editing. So now it's here in Word format. And again, it's something you do have to, these do take a bit of work. These aren't fill in the blank type forms. There's another source that we use for a lot of our materials uh, to give to people, especially to pro se family law litigants uh, is Texas Law Help. And it's an invaluable resource. It's the forms are, are standardized and they're filling the blank and checking off of boxes and they're very helpful. And that's often what we utilize in the modification deal. They have a pre-printed packet and so forth. But, you know, there's also times where you're going to need to maybe use more specific and editable forms that aren't available on uh, Texas Law Help or don't have the level of precision that you require. So you have to, uh, you know, do your own document. So this is the way that uh, O'Connor's presents them. So it takes editing. You got to go through here. O'Connor's does a thing here. So say discovery control plan. That's often information you need to give the court on what kind of discovery control plan. Discovery is the way of uh, obtaining information during uh, litigation. And so there's different levels of discovery that can be pled uh, and utilized in a case. And so uh, you, you, you have to plead a discovery level. Either and I guess in a family law case, the options are either discovery level two or three. Uh, two is a standard, three is a more custom uh, type discovery control plan. But what O'Connor's does, which you do have to edit out then, it gives reference to the section of the family law handbook or other publications where they, uh, where you can read up on information regarding this particular paragraph. So you say, well, what does this mean? So especially if you're a pro se person, you're like, you know, I don't even know what that means. So it allows you to then go to read the O'Connor's Family Law Handbook and read up on that section and understand why that paragraph is there and maybe help you decide uh, what 
you know you need to do with that paragraph and then once you're once you're done you need to edit that part out so if i was doing things i'd maybe choose my discovery control level and then i get rid of this reference you know i'd hit backspace and get rid of that and then you see things here also when you see things in these brackets and you see things in italics that indicates a choice is to be made so say i want i'm going to go with a level two a standard level of discovery in this type of case so i'm going to get rid of those brackets make my choice of level two and then i'm going to uh, get rid of the italics on that and turn that back to regular script same thing here i'm going to choose the applicable rule of uh, civil procedure that governs being a control level two which i believe is section 190.3 of the texas rules of civil procedure so again i'm going to you know get rid of the italics get rid of the brackets and then you kind of got a clean paragraph there like that and then, and then you just kind of go through the same thing you just take some patience and being careful and going through and making this uh pleading case specific to uh, you and fact specific another thing that uh, o'connor's does and westlaw in general does uh, unlike some of the other resources maybe is when they uh, have a document they don't include all the components of a uh, of a pleading and so you have to add them in like up here there has to be the style of the case uh, the style of the case you know identifies the cause number the uh, court and the names of the parties so it might be in the matter of the marriage of so-and-so uh, in in regard to minor children something like that so you do have to go back and plug in some of those components and so how you do that is let me go back to the Westlaw screen here and like I said this is kind of how O'Connor's and Westlaw does it so let me scroll down to the end and so after the pleading after the the petition for modification they have some things that you might need to add in here where it says add in or attach uh, yeah, the style of the case is what I was talking about, or the signature block. Signature block being uh, where you identify yourself as a person filing, the, the party filing the uh, document, give your contact information, you know, your phone number, email, that sort of thing. Uh, attorneys would do the same thing. You know, they say that I'm the attorney for this person and I'm filing this document, uh, you, so you sign it. And so that's what that is, the signature block. So let's go look at the, the style of the case that you would you know, then plug in. So let's open up that document. And again, you can uh, send this to yourself or download it in Word. And then it gives various types of uh, styles of the case that uh, could be used in various situations, like suit affecting parent-child relationship. So up here, you'd wanna put the cause number, you know, cause number you know, 20-DCV12345. Uh, you know, that's the, basically the file number for a case. And then you have the party identification here in the interest of blank a child. And then you have the court identification here. So it's just a case of plugging in the necessary components for uh, any kind of pleading. And like I said, it's, a, it's an extra step or two that needs to be taken. But the, you know, the materials that are in O'Connor's uh, are excellent. Um, you know, they're a well-recognized practice guide uh, and form place. So uh, something that can be used in addition to other resources that we have here for family law. So let me go back to the main screen. Anyway, well, couldn't get back to the main camera screen. Anyway, I just want to say uh, thank you for listening to our video. I hope it's been instructive. Uh, and if you need to contact us for any reason, uh, you can email us at llpublic at fortben.lib tx.us or call us at 281-341-3718 uh, you know hopefully in the near future we'll be opening up uh, a little bit more but we're st still here to help you uh, even under the current circumstances so thank you